Hello everyone, welcome to Star Sea Tarot. I am Charlene Lizette. In today's video, we are going to uncover what the next chapter in your love life is going to be. We're going to find out if new love is coming in, what you can expect, if the person that you're currently with is somebody that you're going to take things to the next level with, and everything in between. We've got six piles today. For those of you that have been around for a while, you know that I I've never done six piles, but I just, I'm in the mood for love. So let's dive in. Let's see what's going on. we got lots of cards that we're going to pull out. There are six groups or six piles for you to choose from. If you would like to pick with crystal amulets from Starseed Jewels, it is my jewelry line. I'm going to put those on right now for those of you that like to pick with crystals. All right, here are the six groups with the crystal amulets. Starting off with group number one, we have Sana. It's got Morganite. Rose Quartz and Green Aventurine. Group number two, Vulcan. Vulcan has Red Tiger Eye, Garnet, and Black Tourmaline, and a little bit of Raven or Willow's Hair. Group number three is one of my favorites. I, I'm always wearing it. Juno, it's got Rose Quartz and uh, Aquamarine, and it's right here. Group number four is Aphrodite, beautiful Amazonite piece, clear quartz, rose quartz, and a lava bead for those of you that love essential oils. Group number five, Athena. It has garnet and strawberry quartz. And last but not least, group number six, Venus, Morganite barrel with rose quartz. So go ahead and pick your group. You can obviously pick more than one if that's what you're called to. And take a look at the description box below for the timestamps that correspond with your group or pile. And I will see you over at your reading. We'll see you soon. Hello, group number one. Welcome to your reading. This is going to be your reading if you picked, obviously, group number one or this beautiful piece, Sana, that has the Green Aventurine, Rose Quartz, and Morganite. There's a few things that I want to mention about this bracelet because I always find that whatever reading I'm doing, it always aligns with the bracelet in itself. So let's talk about the amulet first, some of the energy that's coming in, and then we'll dive into your reading. I designed Sana specifically for people who are needing to heal their heart chakra and heal themselves after experiencing some form of some form of trauma, abuse, toxic, difficult relationship. So in those moments where you experience a lot of suffering, either from a breakup or in the relationship, and then you break up and free yourself, or you've grown up, you know, in an environment where maybe your parents didn't teach you necessarily how to love, or you didn't receive love and nurturing, Sana is designed to help those types of people heal. It's about healing your heart chakra. It's about forgiveness. It's about surrender. It's about releasing the grief, the sadness, and opening up yourself to love, to joyful expectation, and to believing that you deserve love again. A couple of things that may show up in your life if you have experienced anything that aligns with Sana is a lot of shoulder pain. You might also have like issues with your posture. You might have a lot of back pain. You may find that you're constantly uh, curling your shoulders in as a way to protect your heart. Okay, that's one of the things, the tendencies that we have. You may be afraid of being vulnerable again. You may feel that, you know, you're not worthy of love. And so those are typical patterns or characteristics. And that's what Sana is designed to help heal, to help work through. This bracelet is energetically connected to work through those feelings, those emotions, those frequencies, so that you can align with the highest, most perfect vibrational frequency of all, which is love, okay? Now, now that I've said that, let's dive into your reading. I've got one card to describe the word of your relationship, one astrological card to really give us some insights, but we're not going to pull those out just yet. I want to take a look at a card for your person and for you. And then we'll go into the cards and we'll dive in and we'll we'll wrap with this up at the end. Does that make sense? I hope it did. Okay, let's see. So your person has the nine of wands, okay? Somebody who is very much in uh, overworked mode. This person could definitely have back issues or uh, difficulties opening up. You can see that the wands are really almost blocking. They're creating like a barricade, a fence, a wall of swords. But do you see how this person has one wand that he is holding? It's almost like he's not ready to fully close himself off again, 
but yet he is closed off, okay? Now, I'm saying he because the person in the card is a he, but, you know, flip the sexes as it aligns with you and your personal life. Another thing that I really see with this card as well is somebody who is tired. Somebody who's tired of fighting, tired of feeling alone, tired of feeling like the world is against them, tired of feeling like they can't find love. You know, after the Nine of Wands, which is called the Wounded Healer, it's connected to Chiron, okay? This is somebody who is wounded, who is, or the Wounded Warrior as well. This is somebody who is ready to put the wands down. This is somebody who doesn't want to fight, who doesn't want to feel the burden and the difficulties anymore. And so what I'm seeing in this card is that your person is at this place right now where they realize that even though they have experienced a lot of difficulties, a lot of challenges, and a lot of hardship in their life, they don't want to be in that vibration anymore. Now, you're showing up as the Four of Cups. So it's really interesting where you're both at right now. Look at the similarities, right? This person's defensive. They've got closed body language. So does this person as well. So both of you have closed off body language. With the Four of Cups, it almost makes me feel like you've also gone through a lot of emotional difficulties. Whereas this person, your person I feel has had a, a heavy life, like a difficult life, like they've had to do a lot of work, physical work, physical labor, or have just had to be responsible for everybody. Your life, you've had a lot of emotional difficulties, a lot of emotional turmoil, a lot of challenges and obstacles when it comes to feelings, being heard, etc. And, you know, I just got this download, so I'm going to share it with you. It makes me feel like you two are meant to come together to help heal each other. You're supposed to help relieve some of his burden. And he is supposed to come in to help let you know that love is there. Like that somebody is there to emotionally connect with you. You know, it's that, it's that balance. The other thing I'm seeing with you as well here showing up is that the universe is trying to offer you a cup. But you might be afraid. You might feel like, you know, all these other obstacles, challenges, difficulties that I've faced, like as if I'm going to finally find somebody. Like, it's almost like, you're done trying to find somebody because you feel like everybody is going to be the same as all the other obstacles and challenges and difficulties you've had before, which remember what I said to you in the beginning, my readings always align with Sana and I'm pulling the cards right in front of you. So you can see like every crystal amulet that you pick has a message in the cards as well. To me, right off the bat, before even pulling more cards, you're both meant to heal. This is a very healing cathartic uh relationship where you, both of you finally get to meet somebody that you can feel safe with let's pull out six cards for your uh connection meeting look at that and you know i'm gonna tell you something i don't think you've met this person before like i don't think you know who this person is Can I just get three more, please? Look at all this major arcana coming through. Wow. You guys are watching me pull up the... Wow. 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 You guys are watching me pull out the cards in front of you. Look at this. This is absolutely gorgeous. So beautiful. Can you see okay? Yeah, you can. So, if you're the female watching this, or you have more feminine traits, you are about to get swept off your feet by a message, by some wands by some type of communication. 
maybe you're traveling or you're going from point A to point B or you're receiving a text message, a DM, an email, but you're going to receive something. Look at all those ones pointed directly towards the end person. You're not even going to see this coming. You will not even see this coming. They're pointing straight at you. I think what's going to happen here is a, you're going to have a revelation. See, the judgment card is all about revelations. It's answering the call from the universe. It's a spiritual awakening. It's a reckoning of sorts. And the universe is asking you here to, you know, answer the call from the universe. Get up and listen to what the universe is saying to you. To take a leap of faith. To listen to your intuition. I have to tell you something here as I'm doing this reading for you. I understand that after you experience hardship, difficulties, abuse, trauma in your relationships, toxicity, etc., or maybe you've dealt with a narcissist before, or just a very controlling partner, I know that it can feel very um, scary to put yourself out there, to start dating again, to start, um, you know, seeing somebody and being vulnerable. I don't think you've met your person yet. I think your person has worked so damn hard in their life that you even even if you lived near each other you just wouldn't have run in the same time the same circles the same anything and what's actually happening here is the universe is going to introduce you to them one day out of nowhere you're going to see them and your whole life is going to get flipped upside down you're going to have that awakening because I don't think that you've met anybody where <laughs> you felt anything for them. Like you can look at people and be like, yeah, you're cute. Yeah, you're all right. Yeah, you're handsome. Yeah, you're nice looking. But that feeling, that feeling inside where you're like, who are you? I need to know you. Like, why do I feel so connected to you? That's, um, that's, that's coming. For the first time, somebody is, in a long time, somebody is going to pique your curiosity and bring up feelings inside of you that you have not felt in a very long time. You might be going on a walk, you might be somewhere, but man, this is, this is about you. Okay, this is not even necessarily so much about your partner. Your partner comes in at the very end. And the universe is going to ask you to take a leap of faith here. Notice all these cards of solitude. You, The day you meet this person or you run into this person or you see this person, it's literally going to feel like sparks are flying. Like the whole universe is going to stop. Everything's just going to pause in time. It's just going to be, it's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. And then what's going to happen is the universe is going to encourage you and kind of like nudge you to make a move towards this person. And I think here with the high priestess, there's going to be a part of you that's going to want to. And then there might be another part of you that's like, I have to stay like inward still. Like I'm not ready yet. Like that. It's the narrative. I, I keep feeling like you feel like you're not ready yet, but you're ready <laughs> to date again. But the more that you tune into higher consciousness, this is you at your highest expression. This is you aligned with who you truly are authentically, unapologetically. The more you're going to realize that this is your person. See, because the Empress is looking at him. He's, he's worked so hard his entire life to build so much stability, financial wealth, abundance. He might, might be very well off. But everything he has, the one thing he doesn't have is that partner by his side. By his side. And you're going to become that partner for him. As you both work through these things together, you almost have to... You know, in the next six months, I really feel like your whole life is going to be flipped upside down. This idea of like boredom, like you're finally going to take that cup 
the rose thread, inner call, soul led, the mystic, living courageously. I wouldn't even be surprised if maybe like you're a little bit shy or introverted or maybe have a hard time talking to the sex that you're attracted to. And, but this person, he's just, he's gonna, or she's gonna like just pull at you. They're gonna pull at you so much. Where it's gonna be like undeniable that you need to talk to them, that you need to continue some sort of conversation with them, that you need to engage with them, that you need to, I don't know, interact with them, meet them. There's actually a video that's going live today over on my other channel, Charlene Lizette, and it's 10 signs somebody is thinking about you. Um, I'm gonna put the link in the in the description of this video so you can go and watch it um, right by under your group. I've got a feeling that when you two meet, I don't think that both of you are going to immediately interact. But when you see each other face to face, it sparks. It's going to be like the <sighs> whole everything. Whoa. And all of a sudden your heart cracks open. Sana, the name of this amulet in Spanish means heal. So sana means heal in Spanish. Your heart is going to be like, it's time to heal. That's that reckoning. It's time. It's time to open myself up. It's time to be vulnerable. It's time to talk to them. It's time to put myself out there. Lost lands, soul memories and gifts. You've done this before. You see, this is some such a big lesson for you. Of being vulnerable, of opening yourself up, of not being afraid anymore. It's almost like you're leveling up now because the Empress and the High Priestess are like the major arcana, a highest archetype of the divine feminine energy. You're going through this deep healing of no longer feeling like you need to be a wallflower or you need to hide in the shadows or you can't express yourself. And it just really confirms to me this energy that I was picking up in the beginning of the reading where I almost feel like in your life, you have had to deal with people who really wanted to dim your light. They've really wanted you to be somebody that you're not. They couldn't handle how beautiful you were, how uh, charismatic, how magical, how, you know, just how incredible you are. So we had a lot of cards fall. See, this card doesn't even scare me because it, I, I don't doubt it. I think that you and this person, I'm just going to grab the cards that fell, sorry. I feel like you and this person in the beginning will both wear masks when you meet. It's a false, listen to this, someone is wearing a false self mask. Somebody isn't showing you who they are. Maybe you're not showing them who you are. Maybe they're not showing you because of that defensiveness, because of that need to like be in self-preservation and, you know, not open yourself up. But reality is, is that's the ego and that's the shadow self kind of trying to keep you limited so that you can confirm, you know, this narrative that you're not worthy of love when it's the farthest thing from the truth. You're calling in your soulmate. So you got to take that mask off. See the angels trying to take the mask off. Keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual types and expectations. So what are your expectations typically? Right? What are your expectations typically? Because this person, like I said, is going to shake up your whole world. This whole interaction, this whole connection with this person is going to shake you up to your core. Forgiveness is the word that bounds you two together or that unites you. I shouldn't say bound, unites a better word. 
I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. These are two people who are very much in an energy of defensiveness, of resentment. You're both going to meet each other and realize that you need to put the walls down. Forgive the other people that have hurt you and realize that just because somebody else is capable of doing atrocious things doesn't mean that the person that you're with is going to do them. It doesn't mean that every person will do them. This is such a beautiful energy of like love. Wow. Of love. Just like uh, healing, healing. This is such a healing. Sana, healing. If you want to book a cosmic session with me to dive deeper into how I can support you and how you can support yourself and connecting with this person, meeting this person and moving on from those blockages, take a look at the description box below and book an hour cosmic session with me. So the new moon, new beginnings, planting seeds, setting intentions, blank page. Your relationship is literally a, a, a blank page, is a blank book. You two get to write the story of your connection together. An opportunity for you to write exactly the romance that you, of a lifetime, the one that you've always wanted. What does that look like for you? What do you desire in love? And what if you knew that the universe was always working in your favor? And that the universe was going to help you align with this person. Then what? What would your story look like? What would it feel like? It's time now for you to start writing the story of your love life. Leaving it open to the universe to guide you. But thinking about the intentions, right? Like what do you want in your life? What does it look like? How can you bring it in? All right, group number one, that is your reading. If you want to pick up Sana, book a session with me or go watch that video I was sharing with you earlier. Take a look at the description box below. I'm going to move on to group number two now. We will see you later. Alligator. Peace out. Bye. Hello, group number two. Welcome to your reading. This is going to be what's coming up next, the next chapter in your love life if you pick group number two or Volcan. Now, Volcan is uh, Red Tiger Eye. Garnet and Black Tourmaline. There is actually a volcano named Vulcan. And think about a volcano. Okay. What happens? A volcano is fiery. It is hot. It's got magma. And when it explodes, all the juices go everywhere. You know, we're going to try and keep this PG. But think about that energy, that passionate vigor, that fire, that rumbling, the strength of a volcano, okay? The reason why I'm talking about Vulcan before diving deeper into your reading is because I've noticed a pattern that every single amulet that somebody chooses, there's a message in the amulet that aligns with the message in the cards. I instinctually feel like you are a very passionate person and that you seek a passionate partner as well, or maybe that you desire a passionate partner. The word passion is so strong. There is so much love here to be had. There is so much beauty and just like physical connection that is desired right now. And I do feel, and we'll dive deeper into the cards obviously and get messages here, but I do feel like the next chapter in your love life Life, the one key word is going to be passion. Now, in these cards, which we're going to pull out at the very end, flip them over, there is a key word, okay, a mantra, and then there is an astrological card. First, let's dive in and see a card for you and a card for your person. So, this is your person, and this is you. Nines. Very interesting. So what is happening here? Your person right now. Oh, okay. I just got a message here that some of you actually may know, like may know this person, maybe in separation. You may not currently be together, but you had a very passionate connection, a very fiery connection. Your person is really worried. Your person is very, um, very worried, very stressed. Your person's not sleeping a lot at night. And I want to tell you, typically, um, in the writer way, I don't think that the blanket has all the astrological symbols. It could, um, but I couldn't help but notice the following two things. The Aries symbol, which Mars, 
Mars, Aries, and Saturn. I feel like this person has so many feelings that they don't know what to do with them. They overanalyze, they overthink. And I feel like you may have so much love for this person, but you also are guarded, your wounds. You, you're both at nines as well. And nines are about independence so that you can move into the tens, right? Nines are about um, having to like really solidify yourself before being able to move forward with anybody else. I almost feel like this relationship for some of you may have had a false start. Or it could have been like a one night stand, or it could have been like where you realized you were into each other, but you couldn't make the next moves. Like you're looking at this person, this person's up in their head and neither of you are like making a move. You're almost like at a stagnant standstill. Like a, do a dormant volcano with all these feelings suppressed inside. Let's get the cards and see. Oh. So I want to share something about the Seven of Swords. So tarot, when it originally began, and then tarot to what it is now, has naturally evolved and shifted and changed. If you go and research any, uh, wow, if you go and research any website, okay, um, online, like if you Google the Seven of Swords, it all talks about like deception, somebody who's cheating, somebody who's cunning, somebody who's this, somebody who's that. However, however, the definition of the Seven of Swords, according to Raider Way and traditional, traditional tarot, let me just pull out these cards for you here, is quite different. It's not so much about betrayal. It's more about self-preservation. Let me get one more card. Oh, I almost felt like that one wants to come out. <laughs> I'm laughing because I feel like you guys have to redo this. <laughs> Not the reading, like this connection. There's a there's something here that has to get like uh worked through. This feels very karmic to me, okay? I, I am gonna tell you that right now. I am not sure that this is your forever person, but there's definitely some unfinished business here. We'll dive deeper with the other cards to see if this is your forever person in a bit. But for now, let's see what's happening here. So the Seven of Swords in uh, the, the traditional sense, like the true meaning of the Seven of Swords, you see he's taking some swords, but he's leaving some swords behind. So while it looks like he's being sneaky, what he's actually doing is he doesn't want to hurt the other people, right? He's, that's why he's leaving the sword, some swords behind. He's taking these specific swords because he needs to protect himself. Look at his body language. And he's looking back because he doesn't want to leave his friends. It almost feels like he has to leave his friends. I feel like you or your person really struggle with communication. And if we look at the cards, I mean, your person is the swords. You're the wands, though. You're also in a defensive state in this particular card. It, it's like there's things that are unsaid. Neither of you wants to talk about stuff. Neither of you wants to call out the elephant in the room. Neither of you is ready to communicate. But yet there's all these feelings. And this person, and, and, and things that need to be said because swords are intellect, their thoughts, their words. And what comes after the seven of swords, the eight of swords, where he's trapped in his words. He's trapped in his thoughts. He's, she's trapped in, in the mind. She, he, doesn't matter, whatever. So what happens now? The Ten of Swords. Sorry, you guys. I think there's a geese in my backyard. I'm going to go check that out and we're going to dive in. Sorry, that was very distracting. One sec. Hey, 
everybody, what you doing? You okay? Are you looking for your friend? All right, y'all, sorry about that. There was indeed, or rather I should say, sorry, you guys, it's, sorry, everyone. So yeah, there was, there. sorry, everyone. So there is indeed a geese uh, on the building in my backyard, but that's okay. Anyways, let's dive back into this. He was just crying and he was by himself. And I think he, he or she, uh, it's a representative of your reading, crying by yourself, looking for your partner, trying to figure out how to work this out. There's so much ego here, I have to tell you. Two people who feel like the other one needs to make the move. Instead of just figuring out a way to soften up. It almost makes me feel like both of you have hardened because of what's happened. So what happens after the Seven of Swords, right? You go into the Eight of Swords trapped in your own mind. Then you go to the Nine of Swords over analysis paralysis. And then the Ten of Swords. The end. Oftentimes when we look at the Ten of Swords, it looks like an abrupt ending, right? The swords are the guy's dead. And, and normally we can see the light shining here. There's darkness, but there's light here if this was a colored card. The other thing about the Ten of Swords, though, is you, you put a rust to it. Put down the damn swords. They've hurt you enough. Let it go. Move on. It's done. It's done. You're gonna have to put down these swords. I think I know that I know that you don't want to. I know that you feel like it's unfair. Um, and I mean you can do whatever you want to do. I'm not gonna tell you, but the cards are showing here that somebody needs to put down their swords, and you're the one watching this reading. So you're gonna have to figure out a way to release and let go. And I understand if somebody hurt you, like if they were abusive or any of that stuff, naturally, like move on from the relationship. But this is about maybe things that were not said or miscommunication or differences, arguments. And both of you are holding on to this instead of releasing it and letting go. The strength card tells me that there's balance here. It's also strength. So I was actually, I've been studying the strength card a lot because it's been showing up in my readings as a, a lot like my personal readings. And one of the fascinating things I've, I've read about the strength card is it's about, it's, it's about taming the beast. There is a beast here, right? But it's about taming it. Not letting the ego, the lion, right? Uh, the, 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 wildness of the lion go out of control figuring out a way to contain the inner beast this card is also about understanding the balance and having the courage it's the infinity symbol right at the ebb and flow of life finding out and figuring out the right balance between masculine and feminine energy that's required working together collaborating To a degree, I feel like you and this person um, complement each other. But you're both now looking at like everything that pulls you apart instead of looking at everything that could bring you together. It's like a change in perspective here. Now, the Queen of Wands, I'm reading in a couple of different ways. So I'm going to tell you. One, I feel like whoever the Queen of Wands is, Okay, there's a lot of Leo Aries energy here. The Queen of Wands uh, is the individual who is going to experience a big awakening, a big revelation, a big reckoning. I'm also feeling that maybe for some of you, there was a, a slight third party situation. I don't necessarily feel like it was like full on cheating, but I feel like something happened here. Something, something was going on. And all of this is happening to reveal something. The insecurities, the fears, the things that are unsaid, the narratives, the stories, the limitations. 
the faulty belief systems, the faulty patterns. And I've got a feeling too many cards. I just need one. I love that baby steps came out. Hopefully it'll come again. And I love the fact that the Knight of Pentacles showing up. Because I think that the next movement forward has to be one that is steadfast. I wonder if you two shared very awful words with each other. And that's the, the lower vibrational energy of Vulcan, right? Or, or Mars energy, right? That, that like rage. And maybe there needs to be passion instead. What's going to happen in between this connection here with the Knight of Pentacles uh, at the end of this reading is the fact that um, there, there will be a, a message. So we'll, something will be delivered, but in its own time, very slowly, very slowly. And it's going to be very steadfast. It's going to be very stable. It's going to be very secure. It's not going to be like the wild, wild west, which is what I feel you're coming into this reading, listening to this, trying to find out what's happening next. And you just came out of the wild, wild west, like arguments, fights, yelling, screaming, like it was crazy. It was not good. Look at this. Look at this beautifulness right here. We've got loosen your grip, coping mechanisms, density, addiction, let God in. Maybe some of you grew up in like a family where there was like a lot of fighting, a lot of arguments, a lot of combativeness, a lot of drama. And now you're repeating that same cycle with your partners. And you're learning now with that judgment card, there's going to be a big learning, like a big awakening. And then the wild rose, do it your way. Embrace your uniqueness untamed. This could, the, there's three people here. This could also be like a poly situation. Right, where maybe for some of you, you wanted to be in a poly relationship and your partner didn't, and now you're having to learn how to loosen your grip, the strength card here, and just own who you are. Just own who you are. This is a connection that is definitely here to teach you a lot of things about yourself. And, you know, my, my girlfriend and I were talking about this the other day. When a volcano uh, erupts and, like, the magma turns into that rock, it actually makes black, obs um, black obsidian, that crystal, which is a very protective crystal. Very soon, children... Yeah, you have to decide what you want. See, whoever, you're watching this, so this is your reading. You need to decide what you want. Make it very clear, and that's it. But come from a place of love. Come from a place of gentleness. Come from a place of compassion, of unity. Not one of, like, anger and rage and frustration and all that stuff. This is about you finding a way to communicate with your person in a very respectful manner. And if they can't meet your needs, like your uniqueness, if they can't embrace and celebrate who you are, then you need to move forward and find somebody who will. Because I do feel like you will find somebody who will. Clearly decide what you want. You can't hold on to the past and expect something new to enter into your life. Your ch children here, your love life is affected by children. Maybe the drama, the fighting is having kids or not having kids. Trust, the situation is calling for you to have faith. Do you believe that the universe is always conspiring to work in your favor? Maybe this isn't your person. Maybe you're meant to go find your person somewhere else and the universe is trying to show you that this connection is done. Let's get the mantra word. Mm. Mm -hmm. I am attracted to those people who serve me for my highest good. I wonder if some of you were just not getting your needs met in the connection. Last quarter. Wow, look at this. Transition, letting go, adaptation, forgiveness. Forgiveness has shown up a lot. It's time to release. 
and let go and trust that you're going to find the right person. And maybe this person that you're read, like you've, you've picked this reading for, it's time to acknowledge that they're just not the right person for you. If you want to confirm that they're not the right person for you, you can book a cosmic session with me in the description box below. I'm also going to put a video from my main channel um, called Warning Signs from the Universe. Uh, that might actually help you out. I'll put it right underneath the like the group timestamp. And then if you want to pick up Vulcan, you can do that as well. All that stuff is in the description box below. But this is really about asking yourself, like, what do you want? What do you deserve? Do you deserve someone that's not going to be able to meet your needs because they're dealing with their own crap? Or do you deserve to be with somebody who's going to embrace your uniqueness and, and really fulfill your needs and be in a relationship for your highest good, group number two? All right, that is your reading. If you want to work with me in any capacity, take a look at the description box below. I'm going to move on to group number three now. Thank you so much. We will see you later. Alligator, peace out. Bye. Hi, group number three. Welcome to your reading. This is going to be the next chapter in your love life if you pick this beautiful Juno piece. So let's dive in. These two cards we're going to talk about at the very end of our reading. I want to pull some cards to see their energy, your energy, and then we'll dive into the connection, the next chapter, what's happening, what's going on. What I want to share with you very clearly, though, is that there is a common theme, a thread, every time I do these readings with the amulet that you've picked. So to talk about Juno for a minute. Juno is an asteroid in astrology that talks about the type of person, like your ideal partner in a marriage, in a relationship, like what you need in a connection, what you need in order to have a successful marriage, what you desire, what will work for you, and basically what complements you in order for a relationship to be healthy, to be successful. Now, the two crystals in here are aquamarine and rose quartz. We all know rose quartz. We all love rose quartz. It's all about love. It's all about healing. It's all about beauty. It's connected to Aphrodite. Aquamarine is also connected to Aphrodite. Uh, aquamarine is also connected to healing. Deep, deep granular healing. Cellular healing. Okay, it is about being able to heal the throat, to speak your truth or the truth, to have the confidence to tell somebody, I like you, I'm into you, I think you're cute, or whatever that thing may be, to express your needs. So let's dive into this reading here and get, whoa, so many cards flying out. Okay, I'm not going to take this because I wasn't asking a question yet, but the five of pentacles. So I almost feel like, and I actually just heard it, words unspoken. I almost feel like there's something here that needs to be said that hasn't be said that hasn't been said. So let's get a card for your person. Yeah. Hang tight, okay? Because I actually just had a huge revelation regarding the Seven of Swords. Um, and I want to share it with you. And Ten of Swords for you. Things unsaid. Is it over? Is it done? Why haven't we talked? There's things I need to tell you. There's things I need to share. So the Seven of Swords gets a bad rap in tarot these days, right? It talks about deception, betrayal, backstabbing, blah, blah, blah. Very interestingly enough, though, if you actually go back to the origins of tarot and you start reading a lot of books regarding, uh, you know, very... Uh, prominent tarot readers and people who work with the cards, the Seven of Swords isn't necessarily always about deception and betrayal towards others. It's self-deception. It's lying to yourself. It's feeling like you can't speak the truth because swords are communication, swords are intellect, swords are thoughts. And that's what you see in the image. The person only takes five swords. He leaves two behind. Because it's almost like words unspoken. Like they, there's things we, I want to tell you, but I don't know how to tell you. So I need to run away with my thoughts, with my words, with my intellect, with what's going on in my mind. Because I don't know how to communicate it to you. But I don't want you to feel like I'm leaving you behind, even though I have to leave you behind. Because I don't know how to communicate. It's complex. It really is. 
it, the whole journey of the Ten of Swords is the journey of the fool through the sword suit. And basically what happens when we allow our mind to run amok, to run wild, when we let our thoughts, our intellect get the best of us. And for you, my love, you've got the Ten of Swords. Feeling the absolute worst. Betrayal, backstabbing, pain, suffering. But what if it's not like that? What if that's an illusion? Because if this card was colored, you would see that instead of it being dark, the dawn is there. So yes, it's an ending, but also an opportunity for new beginnings. Also an opportunity to wrap up a cycle about a, a way of thinking, a thought process, a belief system that might be faulty, that might not actually be rooted in any reality, in any truth. King of Swords. It almost makes me feel like if you two were actually to sit down and have a conversation with each other, the story would be very different than the story. The, the truth would be very different than the stories you both have told yourselves. Balance. You know, I love Selena. I'm Spanish, for those of you that don't know. Um, and uh, Selena has a song, uh, Amor Prohibido. <laughs> and I just got goosebumps. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, as soon as I said that. <laughs> um, oh my God, I'm going to start to cry. Hold <laughs> on one second, you guys. Okay, in the song, uh, the lyrics in Spanish, uh, Amor prohibido murmuran por las calles. Prohibited love or forbidden love is what they murmur in the streets. And then the rest of the song goes, um, because we're from different societies. But their love in the song, their love transcends time. I'm sorry. I'm going to start to cry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh... <laughs> he feels like he, or the Seven of Swords, he, she, whatever. It feels like he can't tell you the truth about his feelings because they won't be accepted. You feel like he's abandoned you, left you behind, because you're not getting that communication. But the truth of the matter is something so much deeper and something so beautiful. <laughs> Will you two face some adversity as you join? Absolutely. There are people that don't want you two together. But do they really matter? Why do they get such a say in your life, in your love life? Who are they to turn around and tell you that you two cannot be together? See, the King of Swords is unemotional. It's black and white. Lawyer, judge, somebody who can do a pros and cons list and really be analytical about things. Cut through the BS. The temperance card is balance, it's alchemy, it's patience. It's having one foot in the water going with the flow and one foot on earth always staying grounded. You two need to have a conversation. And if this means for you, because you're watching this video, if this means that you need to put the fucking swords down, sorry for swearing, put them down. Talk. It doesn't have to be, you know, you pouring your heart out, but soften. Because you two can build something really beautiful together. 
if you're able to put your differences aside, or not your differences, other people's differences, other people's opinions aside. You got the Ten of Pentacles here. This is a legacy. This is a, a love of a lifetime. Their parents will eventually accept you if that's an issue. For some of you, not all of you, for some of you. The dad, I almost feel like one person comes from money and one doesn't. There's, look at this Ace of Wands, the Three of Cups, the Page of Pentacles. This is like the sprouting of something brand new, something so beautiful. The masculine in this relationship wants so badly to open themselves up. They, but they contain themselves. They have so they try and control themselves so much. And that's why I feel like if you make the move, you'll help them put the walls down. You'll help them to be able to celebrate, to rejoice with the Ace of Wands. There's so much love here. There's so much passion too. There's celebration here. There's so much goodness to have. It's the sprouting. It's the beginning of an opportunity here. With the Page of Pentacles. A seed is planted. Are you going to nurture that seed? Are you going to take care of that garden? What are you going to do? Oh, that card went flying. Hold on. What is it? Where'd it go? <laughs> the crowning, initiation, threshold, birth, rebirth, a seat at the table. Here it is. A new chapter, an opportunity to finally put the swords down and, and just talk. I don't know if you guys can hear all the geese outside of my backyard. They're literally flying right in my backyard right now. The perspective, none of this matters. Zoom out common ground. None of the drama matters. None of it. They want you as much as you want them. You two have the makings of a beautiful connection, of a beautiful relationship. So why do you have to lie or deny each other? Why do you have to pretend that these feelings don't exist? Hmm. Oh, I almost spilled the beans there. It's one second. We're going to do that at the very end. Let's get some romance cards. This is like... This is a connection that's going to move slow. That needs to build a friendship. I would definitely take a look at your astrology and see where Juno sits in your natal chart. This situation is calling for you to have faith. Past life relation. I'm telling you guys, this is such a beautiful union. I felt it in my entire vessel. You both have known each other. It's like when you look into each other's eyes, you're just like, I know you. I might not know you, but I know you. I might be getting to know you, but I know you.
As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. This is two people who are literally self-destructing instead of having a conversation and just being like, okay, we need to clearly do this together. Like we need to, we need to, we need to do this. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to put the swords down. You're inevitably going to end up together in one way or another, or you'll be very sad. But I honestly, this this feels so like twin flamey, soulmatey. Like I wouldn't be surprised if you'll just go around and around in circles until you finally just do the take the next step. You're both. Like you're both right now being propelled towards each other and you're both trying to fight it. Stop fighting it. Surrender. Release. Embrace. Love. I am learning that endings are merely beginnings. Whatever happened that got you to now that needed to end had to end. Because you're both evolving, right? So you're both transforming. The death card is transformation. An old version of you needs to die in order for a new version of you to enter. Look at that. Death, new. Ending, new. New beginnings, planting seeds, setting intentions, blank page. What do you want with this person? You want to be at odds with them or you want to be with them? Decide and move forward from there. All right, group number three, if you want to find out about your person, if you want to get a reading to understand how to take the next steps, take a look at the description box below and book a cosmic session with me. Uh, if you want to pick up your amulet, uh, you can also do that. I'm also going to drop a video from my other channel in the right underneath the timestamp to help you out with this love situation. All right. And yeah, I will see you later. Alligator. Peace out. Sorry. This is just so beautiful. I'm like enamored by the fact that both of you don't want to admit your undying devotion and love for each other. Just fucking like there's so much sexual attention. Just do it. Just do it. All right. We'll see you later. Alligator. Peace out. Bye. Hi, group number four. Let's dive into your reading if you picked Aphrodite and or group number four, okay? Aphrodite is connected to the goddess of love, beauty, harmony, balance, Venus, okay? This is all about self-love and embodying self-love to such a degree that it shares itself or emits itself out into the universe and other people just find you absolutely irresistible and are just so attracted to you as well. Now, what I'm going to do uh, is pull out a card for for you and a card for them them you and then we're gonna dive deep into this reading immediately because you picked Aphrodite I feel like self-love is a big rule of thumb here and also just love luxury sensuality values abundance money everything that has to do with the energy of Venus and Aphrodite they've got the ten of pentacles so okay and you've got ten thousand cards I'm going to get you to take a deep breath in. We're going to actually do it together, okay? Oh. When was the last time you did that? Strength. I still keep getting too many cards. I just want one. Let's land together, okay? They they want to marry you. <laughs> They're, they want to be with you forever. They want to be with you forever. Ten of Pentacles, that's them. They're financially stable. They're solid. They're grounded. They're looking for a wife or a husband. They're looking to be married. And for you, it's time for you to get out of your comfort zone. So think about the future. What do you want your future to look like? What's it going to feel like? 
don't think so much about a person, but think about you. Like, what's your life going to look like? What's it going to feel like? How's it going to be? This person is ready to bring you in, but it's you that's at a distance. This person wants you in their life so badly. So what's holding you back, group number five, four, four? Hold on, I got some cards here. You don't want to admit your feelings? You're scared? Pretending that maybe it'll go away? Afraid of getting hurt again, trying to protect your heart. I'm going to tell you a story. Um, a girl once did a reading with me, uh, and, you know, she had gone through a really hard relationship. Uh, before I pull the cards out, I need to tell you the story. She had gone through some difficult relationships. She had really struggled finding love. Like, she couldn't find her person, all that stuff. And she bought Aphrodite from me. And she was an artist. She bought Aphrodite from me and she wore it. And then one day the beads got ruined when she was doing art. Like, I guess it got stuck with whatever the chemicals when you're painting. And she felt really sad about it. And I fixed it for her. But I said to her, you know, the amulets, they're meant to be with you until they're meant to no longer be with you. Some, some of my crystals I've had for years. Some of my crystals I lose in my own house because crystals are energy. Sometimes I'll be wearing an amulet. Like there was a one time in my, in my life where I had a lot of people kind of sending me some bad vibes. And every time I would put on one of the Mal Ojo bracelets, it would burst. And I'm not talking about like, it would literally explode. Like I'm not talking like it would fall off or like untie. I'm talking explode. And so after I fixed the amulet for her, I said to her, remember, the next time that something happens with this amulet, remember that maybe the amulet has done its job for you, right? Like it's done its work. The crystals have done their work for you. And sometimes when that happens, you just give the crystals back to earth. You know, you dig a little hole, you say thank you, and you put them back into the earth, right? Crystals are literally made of the earth. And not a year goes by later. And I kind of kept in touch with her on Instagram or whatever. And she met her person. Then six months later, they were engaged. But it took her having to heal. It took her having to fall in love with herself. It took her learning to embrace herself. It took her tapping into that Aphrodite energy. And I think that's why you picked Aphrodite. Because you're ready to not be afraid of love anymore. You're ready to open yourself up and surrender. That's too many cards. I just need four more, please. That's five, six, four more, please. Yeah, you're ready. You got to work through these fears, these narratives, these stories, these limitations. Oh my gosh, you are transforming. Look at all this major arcana. Wow. I don't think you've met your person, to be quite frank with you, but your person is calling you in. Your person's basically has his castle or her castle. They have everything except for you. You're like the missing puzzle piece. You got to get out of there out of the space right now. You gotta get on that ship. You're waiting for your ships to come in, but my love, I'm gonna tell you, you gotta get on that ship. So maybe this means traveling. Maybe this means changing your mindset. Maybe this means working with a spiritual coach or teacher, somebody who can, who can help you, like somebody like me, or if you have a therapist, whatever. Maybe this is about you learning how to put yourself out there and maybe not being so closed off to the world.
the wheel of fortune, things are turning. Your fears, you're transforming. And you're trying to fight this transformation. Because somewhere along the lines in your life, you were told that you're not worthy of love. You were told that you were unlovable, that no one was going to love you, that you're not beautiful, that you're not this, that you're not that. And none of that is true. You are gorgeous. You are magical. You are powerful. You are intelligent. You are strong. You are worthy. It's time now. It's time now to stop fighting the transformation and embrace this. The universe is literally like forcing you here. That's, I'm not, I'm not even gonna try and sugarcoat the words. Wheel of fortune, the moon, and death. The universe is forcing you. The universe is saying, enough. Enough sitting in the wallowing and the sadness of the heartbreak, of the obstacles and the difficulties. It's time now for you to transform. It's time now for you to show up. You have been in the cocoon stage for so long, the chrysalis stage for so long. It is time now for you to spread your wings like the beautiful butterfly that you are. The anointed, answer the call, leadership, empowerment, soul gifts. I don't even know. I feel like too, you're a little bit stuck in your career. You just feel a little bit stuck, stagnant. Like you're ready to transform your life. You're ready to get unstuck, but you don't know how. Two cards flew. I'm going to take them actually. The first one is Hadrian energy, codependency boundaries. And the second one is, wait, it's not time yet. Things are being woven. You're trying to fight a transformation instead of surrendering to the transformation. You're trying to hold on to these past parts of you that are asking to be released and let go. Things are being woven. The universe is working through things. Maybe in parts of your life you have to wait, but in other parts you have to surrender. You have to embrace. For some of you, you may be trying to figure out where this person is and why you haven't met them yet. And the universe is saying, it's time for you to transform. You have to transform because you have to meet your person on an energetic level where they're at. You're manifesting a type of person right now, but your energy is not manifest, not matching that person's, what? You're manifesting a type of person right now, but your energy isn't matching that person. True love. This is like, I'm telling you, your person's literally like, where are they? Where are they? Why haven't I met them yet? And you're like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm scared to move out. I'm scared to, st I'm stuck. I'm feeling limited. I'm feeling looped. Free yourself. You even get extra cards. You know, it's really important for you to fall in love with yourself, for you to get to know who you are. For you to embrace and surrender. Look at this love that's wanting to come into your life. It's literally around the corner. But you got to get out of your house. <laughs> no, they're not going to come knocking at your door as a delivery. You got to get out of your house. You got to get out there. You got to get out there.
you got to put yourself out there and embrace and love and be and let go of this idea that you're not worthy of love. Tune in and tap into this Aphrodite energy. It's truly so beautiful, truly so magical. You have, look at this, true love for yourself and you love it, safe for you to love. How many more signs do you need, group number four? How many more signs do you need? This is the word that connects your union. Laughter, the lighter side of life, humor. When was the last time you laughed? Self note, gifts and lessons. Oh, this is a person from your past, 1 billion percent, like past lives. This is a lesson about your self worth, something that you've continuously had to learn over and over and over again. Maybe you have a Libra self node or a Taurus self node. This person is here. Stop fighting it. Stop fighting this love. Surrender to it. Embrace yourself and watch how quickly they come into your life. Like the story I told you about the girl who purchased Aphrodite years ago. All right, group number four. If you want to book a session with me, discover more about this reading, or if you want to purchase your amulet, take a look at the description box below. I'm also going to link a video right under the timestamp uh, to help you out further over from my other channel. All right. We will see you later. Alligator. Peace out. Bye. Hi, group number five. This is going to be your reading if you picked Athena with the Garnet and the Strawberry Quartz. These two cards are going to tell us a keyword of your connection along with some astrological updates. To start off though, I do want to talk about Athena. I have found a common theme. When you all pick a specific crystal amulet, it definitely has a message that aligns or complements the tarot reading that you have picked. Athena is not necessarily one of the amulets created for love. Athena is about empowerment. If you know, Athena is the goddess of war and wisdom. She has the owl, also known as Diana in Roman mythology. The garnet in this piece is all about finding that power, that passion, that fire within you. It activates your sacral chakra, and it also activates your ability to birth new things into being. This is about being able to believe in yourself. This is about being able to find the power internally to birth a new relationship or a new connection together. One that is successful, one that is fruitful, one that will offer you a lot of stability and a lot of love and a lot of passion. The Strawberry Quartz piece uh, is a great crystal for connecting and meeting people. So it almost makes me feel like you may have tendencies to be introverted or may not necessarily want to be in the public eye or have attention on you. And what's happening here is the universe is saying, in order for you to get this next stage or next chapter in your in your love life, in order for you to move forward, in order for you to meet somebody or be with the right person or have that relationship that you've always desired, you're going to have to tap into that inner warrior and use that wisdom to be able to attract that ideal partner that you've always wanted. So we're going to pull out a card here for your person and then for you. Now, keep in mind that you may not have met your person just yet. This is just where their energy is at right now. Five of Wands. Fighting, competition, battling themselves, battling others. They're going through a lot of turmoil, a lot of change right now. You, Eight of Wands. So I love that you're both fiery energy. I mean, Athena definitely connects with fire elements as well with the garnet and the strawberry quartz. So to me, it tells me that you're moving very fast. You're in this energy of momentum. You're in this energy of propelling yourself to the next stage in your life. While your person seems to be potentially battling something internally or with other people or may find themselves in some type of conflict, some type of obstacle, some type of challenge right now. You may actually be thinking about traveling soon. You may actually be feeling like you need to move careers, homes, environments, 
maybe meeting new people. There's this really uh, quick energy around you. When I look at your person, I see that your person, it almost makes you feel like your person doesn't want to be in this combative nature. However, they're in there now and they're going to defend themselves. So it's interesting that the element of warrior is already showing up in your reading. Let's take a look at meeting, connecting. Let's do the rest of your spread. Another five of swords here. Who wins, who loses? Six of, of wands. Hmm, your person right now is going through some obstacles financially. Look at the repeating numbers. Two, two fives, two eights. What do we got here? Three, four, no, I need two, please. The download just came through and it said, sometimes you have to be wise enough to know when it's not worth fighting for something that isn't deserving of you. The wise person knows when to fight the war and when to back off and when to move on. I feel like for some of you, actually for a lot of you, I should say, like 80, 90% of you that are watching this right now, you have been in a situationship or a connection that doesn't seem to move forward in the direction you want it to. You're envisioning marriage, life, you know, like you, you want those things. This person is too busy fighting themselves and fighting other people. Somebody here is going to lose and somebody's going to win, but winning at what cost with five of swords? This is very ego. Whenever I see the five of swords, I think about somebody who is driven by their ego, who needs to fuel and feed their ego. Here's what I'm going to say to you. This person that you are watching this reading for is not your person. There. I said it. If you don't like that, it doesn't align. You're welcome to watch something else. If it doesn't resonate, leave it. There is somebody else here that's coming in for you. Uh, through work. You're going to be meeting them after you acknowledge and realize that this person just wasn't worth your time. Remember what I said to you in the beginning, know when something's worth fighting for or know when something's worth like letting go. Like think about Athena, the warrior, warrior goddess, wisdom goddess. She is wise enough to know what moves to make when she is in war. She uses that wisdom. That's how she's successful. So you've got a really good head on your shoulders. You've got a really bright future ahead of you. And your person is dealing with their own demons, their own obstacles, their own challenges, their own difficulties, whatever things that they're going through. And they don't know how to separate things. I honestly also really feel like this person may be very emotionally immature or may not necessarily know how to like articulate or communicate properly. And they project a lot of their shit. I honestly don't like this person there. Said it as well. This person will keep you looped, keep you stuck, keep you in their like chaos, in their drama, in their challenges, in their obstacles until, until you make a choice to leave. You may even feel stuck right now. Like a part of you is like, I don't want to be with this person anymore. But, you know, like you're still trying to be an optimist. You're still trying to look at things from a glass half full and it's okay to be an optimist it's okay to look at things from a glass half full but it's also important to be realistic sacred waters nourishment replenishment <laughs> nourishment replenishment health rest self-care yeah this is about you honoring your vessel, respecting yourself, and no longer allowing yourself to be dragged into the drama, the obstacles, the challenges, whatever perceived conflict or chaos this person that you were talking to. Uh, I definitely feel like all of you know this person. You're in a thing with them. It's been kind of weird. 
it's like one day good, one day bad. You feel like you're on a roller coaster, love bombing, discarding. Honestly, it's, it might be a little bit even narcissistic or just controlling or toxic. <laughs> Lifting the veil, questioning everything, anything unaligned must go. Yeah, this is you tapping into that warrior energy, which is interesting that you picked Athena. You realize now that you need to let go of this person. Sometimes success means knowing when to let go, when something isn't working for you and moving on and going towards a new path. Going towards a new journey, uh, opening your eyes to a truth here, maybe. See, lifting the veil is questioning everything. Anything unaligned must go. You must start asking yourself why this person always needs to win in every argument. Why there always seems to be drama connected with them. Why there's always this conflict, these obstacles, these challenges. Why it always seems that you guys can't find middle ground and you're always compromising. You're always trying to figure out a way to make it work for them or, you know, to balance out things. And it just seems like, you try and solve one problem and all of a sudden another problem shows up. You try and solve one problem and another problem shows up. It's like over and over and over again. It, it feels like it's never ending. You're really being asked right now to focus on your career and your finances, to get financially stable, to focus on your business, on your stability, your roots, your foundation, on creating your own security in your life. I can't help but feel like this person really restricts you or creates a lot of obstacles. Like you love them, but you're realizing now the more that you're lifting the well, the veil, and the more that uh, you're practicing rest and self-care, that this person um, isn't necessarily the best influence for you or the best partner or the best person. I do feel that there is somebody new that's on the horizon with this page of wands. There's somebody that's wanting to enter and deliver a message to you. I don't do reversals, but notice how the cards came out reverse. Chemistry and express your love. So I do believe that you two have chemistry. It's just, is the chemistry enough? There's five pillars of love, like five, five fundamentals that you need in order to have a healthy relationship. Uh, it's physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and financial. And if you don't have those five pillars, if they're not aligned, if those five pillars of compatibility aren't aligned with a person that you uh, are attracted to, that you have chemistry with, the relationship um, is basically doomed. It'll lead to some form of failure. Because the values that have to be in alignment so you two have to have those aligned values or complement, like they have to complement each other. Love yourself first. Mm -hmm. This is about you learning to take back your power, reclaim your power. If you're in a like toxic obstacle or situation right now in a romantic dynamic or situation ship, take a look at the description box below to book a cosmic session with me. Um, I'd love to help you out and support you in your transformation and unlocking your dream life and lifting the veil and being able to move on from this connection that is just really limiting you and keeping you blocked. The universe wants to offer you a new connection here. But how can you get that new connection? If you don't focus on your own success, if you don't focus on your own wisdom, on your own warrior energy, I almost feel like parts of you have to live for this person. I don't know why I'm hearing that, but the universe is saying, no, now it's time to live for yourself. Yeah, success. I know there's no greater goal than to love. Love for yourself. Be successful for yourself. Full moon, energy peak, harvest, blessings, achievement. Yeah, full moons are also a time of release, right? The energy is peaking here in this connection and you're almost realizing like there's no, it's not going to go any further than this. It's reached its limit. It's reached its, its cap here. I feel like this person 
would rather win than work together and collaborate with you towards something that is beautiful, something that is healthy. They're so like, I keep seeing this five of, of swords. They're so worried about them being right, them being on top, them controlling everything and them doing everything. Even these two cards together is somebody who's narcissistic. They've got to be the center of attention. I just, you know, I don't want to make this about this person, but I think that you're starting to see all these things about them. It's almost like the veil is being lifted and you're seeing things and you're seeing things for what they are, not for what you wish them to be. It's like this opportunity here for you to reclaim your power, for you to step into your own energy, for you to tune in and tap into your own energy and really just show up authentically and unapologetically. Without feeling like you're compromising anything about yourself or needing to dim your own light or needing to be somebody else for them to like love you or value you or respect you. They should respect you as you are, not for some weird distorted fantasy, an illusion of who they think you need to be. This is like the more and more I'm tuning into this energy, the more I wanna turn around and tell you like, listen, it's time for you to cut your losses with this person and move on. And somebody better is is on the horizon. But this is about you learning to love yourself first. Like you deserve love in your life. You deserve a healthy chemistry. But it, it, the keyword is healthy. The connection has to be healthy. It has to be respectful. It has to be balanced. It has to complement each other. Not one-sided. And right now I feel like you're battling trying to make something work. It's, just, it's like a square into a circle. It's not going to work. All right, group number five, if you want to book a session with me, pick up your amulet, take a look at the description box below. Um, if you want to find out if you're in a toxic relationship, watch the video in the link that's under, that's going to be underneath the group number five uh, section in the description box. All right, I'm going to move on to group number six now. Uh, you deserve so much better than this. All right, sending you so much love. We'll see you later, alligator. Peace out. Bye. Hey, group number six, welcome to your reading. This is going to be for you. Next chapter in your love life, if you pick this beautiful piece called Venus with the Rose Quartz and Morganite Barrel. Whew, whew. You got jitters? What's going on here? I'm feeling a little jittery. I'm feeling like you're feeling like you're jittery. Like there's something going on. There's something there's something happening. There's something you're feeling, something that's um, percolating inside of you. This is what we're going to do. This is going to be a keyword for your connection along with or a message for you. This is going to be an astrological update regarding the next chapter in your love life. I am going to pull out some cards here. This could be somebody you're dealing with or it could be your person that you're going to be uh, meeting. We'll find out, obviously, as we dive into the reading. This is too many cards. Woo! Oh my God. Okay. That's too many cards. I just need one for their person. This person's got spicy energy. I felt that. I felt that. Like, look at all this. They want to like talk so much. Okay. One card. I'm doing this live so you all can see exactly what's going on. This person has a lot of energy. I'm almost getting this energy that they have a lot of energy for you. They've got a lot of feelings for you. They're very interested in you. You know, Venus, this piece specifically, is designed to ignite passion and love and romance and to make you irresistible and super attractive so that you can attract the right partner into your life and, like, really fire up your love life. I wonder if when this person sees you, that's what they feel. Three of Wands, or Two of Wands, sorry. And your card, they, they're they like, how do, how do I bring this person into my world? <laughs> yeah. 
you're sitting pretty. You've got a good life. You are very comfortable. You're very happy. You're very joyful. You're very self-fulfilled. And this person here with the two of wands, they're trying to figure out how to make a move towards you. They, they get all like worked up. Mm -hmm. You know, the two of wands specifically in the Raider way uh, is pretty phallic. The wands are pretty phallic looking. So yeah, you know, there's a, uh, whenever they see you, if you got that, I'm trying to keep this PG. There's definitely this energy here of them being really, really interested in you and um, being extremely attracted to you physically. They look at you as like their dream come true. And you're just minding your own business. And you're like, I'm living my best life. I'm amazing. I'm beautiful. I'm all these things. And you are, my love. You are 1000% unequivocally. This person just wants you so bad that they get, they get a little bit emotional. <laughs> but like passionately emotional. Lee Charge. When they see you, they like don't know what to do. They're like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, they almost get like nervous around you. I do feel like this person is within your proximity. Maybe you're not talking to them in the sense of like, you know, uh, dating or getting to know each other. You might be coworkers, uh, go to the same school, same gym, same coffee shop, whatever, that kind of stuff. Let's get this uh, dive into this reading a little bit more. I'm, I'm getting spicy feelings here. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I'm feeling a little bit spicy as we're tuning into this energy. King of Pentacles. The world. Yeah. You know, you know, Aladdin, I can show you the world. <laughs> yeah, this person wants to show you the world. Oh, boy, this person. Okay, I gotta say this person is very financially well off, very stable, very methodical, very slow to move, very steadfast. They process things in a very long way. Like they definitely take their time. Um, yeah. <laughs> like they want to wipe you up or husband you up. Two of two of swords reverse coming in. One, two, three, four, five. Something, something is like, something's making them hesitate. And honestly, I think that it's just their nerves. They're like, they're on their way. They're on the way. Oh, it's you. You're the problem. Okay. You're the problem. I'm just joking. Group number six, but not really in the sense that they're wanting to come in and you're like, um, Mr. or Mrs. Independent, I can do it on my own. I think that as a self-preservation mechanism, you've gotten very comfortable being on your own, living on your own, doing things on your own. And this person's really trying to enter into your life and just be like, you don't got to do it alone, babe. We can do this together. Like, look how he looks at you. Like, look how he looks at you. He's looking, he's like, I want all these things with you. I want to have the world with you. I want to take you around the world. He has money. He has good career, finances, life. His life is good. He's like, I want to bring you in. I'm going to show you the world. I'm going to give you everything. I want to give you all this love. Like, he romanticizes your connection. He romanticizes you so much. Like, he's got googly eyes for you. Like, such googly eyes. Like, oh, I'm going to love her. I'm just saying her because it's the king of pentacles. Take it as it resonates for you obviously switch the sexes okay if you need to i want to marry her i want to have a celebration with her i want to have a house with her i want to be with her i want to like create stability and foundation i want all these things with her and then you miss thing okay or mr thing i like mm, no no and honestly you're lying to yourself there we called it out we called it out you're lying to yourself you want this person just as much as they want you and you're like mm, you're gonna have to work a little bit harder you're gonna have to work a little bit harder you're gonna have to do this you have to do that and i'm gonna tell you something okay group number six um if you really want to be single and you're not interested in this person okay fine fair enough remove them but you're watching this so stop lying to yourself you know, you know that you want this person. You know that you're, you know that you're, you're, you're the queen of cups. You get, it's because you have all these emotions. You're trying to block all these emotions, all these feelings. You're trying to put on a front like I'm Miss Independent or Mr. Independent. I have everything good. Everything is perfect in my life. But the reality is the truth is that you and this person complement each other so well. You would work out so well together.
hello, earth and water is beautiful. <sighs> I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit annoyed with you because it's right here. So what is this two of swords? What is blocking you here? Why are you feeling this two of swords? Why are you feeling so stuck? Why are you feeling like you can't show people your emotions? Sure you can. This person's going to be, this person's going to ground you. Okay. That's what, that's what earth does to water. It grounds it. It's beautiful. And it lets it be free. Sophia, divine plan, wisdom, intelligence within destiny. You already know. You already know you're meant to be with this person. Cosmic ancestors see the light by staying grounded. This person is literally gonna, oh, you are so powerful. You're so psychic. You're so in tuned. You're so intuitive. And this person's gonna help you just take things to the next level. This person is gonna help you really tap into your gifts on a deeper level and give you this amazing safe space to just be. Like this person wants to marry you. Your person, you, you're walking into the next chapter of your love life, getting married, like meeting your person. And I think you guys have already met. I think that you know who I'm talking about, or you may have like this in inclination, this intuitive hit, and you're just kind of like, <sighs> but it's time now. It's time to enjoy it. It's time to open yourself up to it. It's time to work through this blockage. If you want to work through this blockage here, take a look at the description box below and book a cosmic session with me. I'd love to help you out through this blockage because it's he's right here or she's right here. It's right there. It's so beautiful. Trust. Oh, I was supposed to do the romance cards. Whatever. We'll go here and we'll do romance cards in a minute. Um, I accept that my inner voice will always guide me correctly, right? Like, where are you not trusting yourself? Just because shitty stuff happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen again. And look at all this purple. Look at all this blue. This is your third eye, your crown chakra, your throat chakra. Everything is coming through to tell you. Sagittarius. Like, luck, expansion, abundance, travel. It's all here. This person is like trying to figure out how to bring you into their life and share all these beautiful things with you. That's what they're trying to figure out. Like, how do I share all these beautiful things with you? Like how, you know, like, how do I do it? How do I make it happen? And the universe is saying, trust your intuition. will, your inner voice will always guide you correctly. Trust the universe is showing you the way forward with this person. Trust, believe, trust. Stop trying to hold yourself back from experiencing a connection. Stop trying to hold yourself back from tuning in and tapping into the highest vibration of all, love, trust. What, what's blocking you? What's keeping you stuck? Wh where do you need to work on the emotional intelligence and the wisdom internally? And really ask yourself, like, what is stopping you? This situation involves a wedding. A marriage, 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 marriage. Stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. The card said it, not me. Let go of control issues. Allow this to unfold naturally. Give yourself the opportunity, the space to evolve in this connection, to, to experience this person, to understand who this person is. Give yourself the opportunity to recognize, you know, how you try and really control things and limit things in your life. Rather than just embracing and going through the journey, riding the wave of the emotions. You're so in tune. You're so, you're so in your feelings. You know all this stuff. 
right? So now it's time to like apply it. Now it's time to be in action. Now it's time to let this person in and let them lead. But let them in. Stop blocking them. Let them in. Let them in and allow everything, to, the rest to unfold naturally. I think you can do that. You think you can do that? I think you can do that. All right, group number six, that is your reading. It's so beautiful. If you want to book a session with me, pick up your amulet. Take a look at the description box below. I'll also drop a video from my other YouTube channel for you to go watch uh, to help you in this connection because you deserve to stop sabotaging this love, all right? Okay, we will see you later. Alligator, peace out. Bye.